Today's the day. Learn about a can't-miss celebration that's been going on locally for more than 128 years. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're on stage at the Alabama Theater in North Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the 2004 Gallivan's Ferry Stump, which kicks off today at 430. And we're visiting with Russell Holliday, one of the organizers. Good morning, Russell. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming in. It is so exciting to think everything has led up to today, the big day. Folks will be rolling out to Gallivan's Ferry all day, getting ready for stuff kicking off at 430. Oh, oh, yes. We've got people out there right now putting up the tent putting out the chairs. The chicken bog people are cooking. They start early in the morning cooking, you know, right. to have everything ready by 4.30 today. How could you and your mom relax yesterday on Mother's Day with so much going on today? Well, I told her that I thought we would celebrate after this. Right, right. You'd wait and have Mother's Day tomorrow. We will. We That's will. That's right. Golly, Russell, it's so exciting. And, you know, to think five, five or six weeks ago you were with us. And then John Jenrette the next week, and then I think uh, Tommy Britton, and then Sally Howard, and uh, of course Billy Holiday, your cousin, was on with us last Thursday. We have learned so much about some of the activities going on in Gallatin's Ferry. It's amazing. Well, thank you. I mean, we're really proud of this. It's a, it's a great tradition. It's a great tradition for our family, but it's a great tradition for South Carolina. Um, it's a local legacy of South Carolina, officially, in the Library of Congress. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, and guess who? Guess who put us in there? Who? Fritz Hollins. Is that right? That's Gallivans. right. He he nominated the Gallivans Ferry Stump speaking to be in the Library of Congress as a local legacy. So now people can go online and look up about the Gallivans Ferry Stump. They can read newspaper articles. They can see photographs. It's all online. Uh, it's all there if you want to go see it in person. Senator Hollings is going to be there in six, seven hours today. I mean, he's going to yeah, be out a, in Gallivans yeah. Ferry. Yeah. He's arriving at five o'clock. And he's going to mingle with, he loves mingling with the crowds. Yeah. He and Pete Seal will just be working the crowd. And, and they see all these people that, that have been coming for years and years. Yeah, sure. So a lot of people are coming today because it's his 50th year. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people, we've got some old timers who've been there almost since he's been there. Since 1954? Yes. When he was running for, was it lieutenant governor? For lieutenant governor, which he ran and, and, and won. And won, yeah. And he was a Democrat, obviously, back then. The, the stump, for viewers who, who may not have seen the last five weeks or seen any of you all on, the stump is something that's indicative of, of a Democratic culture, but is, is open to everyone. It's open to everybody. It's, uh, it is traditionally Democratic, in that only Democratic speakers can speak. And, but the Republicans are there, well, not only to see all the crowd, but to honor Fritz Hollins. I mean, they, everybody respects Fritz. But... Everybody comes because it's a chance to see people face to face. Mm -hmm. You get to meet the voter, you get to meet the candidate, shake his hand, ask him a question that you've been wanting to ask but couldn't get him on the telephone. Oh, yeah. That's a great point. That is a great point for viewers within the PD or southeastern North Carolina even to come down and have a chance to see a U.S. Senator or see folks out. I know you'll have somebody from the Kerry campaign in today. It's very exciting. I think you're waiting. I think you said earlier it'll be a secret until the it's day. It's a secret right. until they appear. Right. But we're very excited about that, that they are taking the time to appear in Gallivant's Ferry. They do it not only because of this tradition of the Gallivant's Ferry stump being so important to South Carolina, but also because they just love Fritz Hollins. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, I'm honored that they're coming. Uh, well, I wanted to tell you that we're also honored that we've got Governor McNair is coming, and we've got Governor Hodges will be there. We've got Congressman uh, John Spratt. Uh, uh, Congressman Jim Clyburn, and the mayor of Charleston, Joe Riley, who you know a lot of people have seen on TV because during Hugo, I mean he was a central focal point, mm -hmm. uh, keeping everybody informed. But and we've got let's see, Senator John Land mm -hmm. will be there. Uh, let's see, Representative James Smith, and then of course we've got uh, Dick Elliott will be there. We've got uh, Vita Miller from Georgetown, oh, yeah, sure. and Inez Tenenbaum will be there, who is uh, our candidate trying to replace Fritz Hollins, but nobody can ever replace him. 
but I'm saying follow him. Right, right, right. Follow in his footsteps. That's right. Of course, that's right. Well, I think she's got a big race ahead. And you never know who may show up. I think in town this weekend, uh, Senator Graham was in town speaking to Coastal. He may have been out there yesterday at the Republican follow-up to, to y'all's big event. He may end up showing up there today. Well, he might. He might. Uh, Governor uh, Mark Sanford has come to so many stumps. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember when he was first running for Congress and he came up and said, oh, hello, I'm so-and-so, I'm running for Congress. I said, oh, my goodness, I don't have you on the agenda. <laughs> I mean, I was so focused on who our speakers were that I wasn't even looking at our opponents. Right. But anyway, but he always he, he's always come in the past. I, I don't think he'll be there today since they just had the thing yesterday. Right, right. Golly, Russell, take back to the... Can you remember the first stump that, uh, that I guess you attended so many at such an early age? you remember? Can you remember back to the first yeah, one? Yeah. I, mean, I, I can't remember the first one. Right, of course. Yeah. It all sort of fades. But, but I remember just being a child and running around and trying to see how many stickers I could get and how many candidates I could get to sign my T-shirt. Or um, I mean, if you'll see babies, you know, with balloons with vote for my daddy hanging on it or a T-shirt, vote oh, yeah. for my daddy. And so the kids have a really good time. Uh, back then, we didn't have what we've got today. We've got uh, things for the kids. We've got baby donkeys, and we've got mule rides, and uh, we've got face painting for, for the kids. So we've got a lot of things for the entire family. Mm -hmm. And snow cones. And snow cones. Maybe a little funnel candy. funnel yeah. cakes. Funnel cakes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got, I think, a, a donkey. Not only do we have live donkeys. We have a donkey person who's going to be walking around, and I'm hoping the uh, forecast that they've got today for being so warm today. Right. But you know, by six o'clock it'll cool off. Oh yeah. Some, and that's when the official, uh, actual speaking will begin. Now, is that part of the reason why you all have it a little later in the day? Is to hopefully cool things down a little bit, or is it to put the spotlight on candidates as it gets dark? You know, you asked me a question there that I'm not sure why we always had it in the afternoon. The, the schedule was always set in recent years because of Fritz Hollins mm -hmm. and what fit his schedule the best. Wow. And uh, I mean, deal. we would ask yeah. him before we'd ask the Democratic Party uh, locally and, and statewide, you know, whether or not this suited. We'd ask him first what fit your calendar. That's amazing. Golly, Russell, how exciting, of course, to see that. And, of course, with this being the, the last stump that he attends, as a, not as a candidate, but as an actual office holder, that must be pretty emotional for all y'all. It really is. I mean, it, people have just got to come to listen to Senator Fritz Hollins last speech at the Gallivant's Ferry Stump Speaking. Now, as you know from his reputation, he doesn't hold back anything. So I can't wait to hear what he's got to say. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's always, he talks, and he never has a note. Right. Is that right? He never has one note. Oh, wow. He talks just from what he he feels, right. and he never has any stuttering or anything. It's just it's always so pointed. I assume it's that's wonderful. part of the reason why he's won over and over and over. Had yeah. a very successful track record because it's it's truly uh, from from within. And he cares. I mean, I've never seen a man who's got such a caring ability and such a steel trap of a mind. I mean, to you know, he'll see somebody that is from a whole other part of the state, well, who might be at the Gallimans Ferry Stump. And he'll say, well, hello, Joe. What are you doing here from Spartanburg? You know, I mean, he just really remembers. And he'll say, well, how's Mary? It's, it's, he just cares. He's done so much for this region. But I was talking to somebody just the other day uh, in Greenville and saying how much he had done for the people in Greenville. Mm -hmm. And you think of Greenville as being, you know, totally Republican. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, Fritz has just done what he believed right for the state. Mm -hmm. Not what, not what was the party line. I mean, he didn't always vote the party line. Right. He voted what was right for the state. Now that's oftentimes a perception that's recognized for Senator Thurman or his legacy that's right. there of having really brought, not brought home the bacon, but done a lot for his home state. That's right. Both those guys. You know, and I think like uh, Inez Tenenbaum, who will be there, uh, and she is our superintendent of education right now, and she cares so much about the state. But what is really interesting about her is even though she is a Democrat, I've never seen so many Republicans that do think the world of her because she seems to be so independent, independent-minded, in that, you know, she's not saying, okay, well, I'm going to do this because this is Democrat. I'm going to do this because it's Republican. Mm -hmm. She does common sense what she thinks is right for the state. 
Mm -hmm. Russell, think back 10 years ago. Let's take it back to then. What was going on 10 years ago for your, let's say, your uncle and your dad? What was a day like today like? What was a day like today for your dad, obviously, uh, as intimate as you, as you were with him? Well, he probably he probably wouldn't be here because he would still be going. I mean, I'm leaving as soon as I leave here. I'll be going to see about all those I's and dotting the I's and crossing the T's. But he'd be sitting at that conference room table with uh, Bill Davis, and they'd be making sure that they had how many minutes they've got for each speaker, make sure, you know, there's always a last-minute change, which I may find out when I leave here. Uh, and he'll adjust the schedule, or he'll find out that somebody's got to fly out early, so he'll move them up to the front. He makes sure that all the chairs are out and that we've got parking for the VIPs, which are the speakers who need to be parking right there. So he'll be lining up all that. He would be lining up all that. Right. I said it in the present tense yeah. because I know that he's looking down. He's looking down and making sure we're doing it right. Oh, yeah, Russell, that's a, that, that's that got to be a great feeling. That's got to be a great feeling. And I know a very emotional one, knowing that you and your sister and the other organizers, and it's been a My great cousins. group. My cousins. Your cousins as well, absolutely. Right. And, and, of course, Billy was with us last week, and I think he said Sally Howard was more or less representing his that's side right. of the family. That's right. Well, uh, his sister, Billy Holiday's sister, Betty Holiday McLeod, is co organizer with me, a co-host uh, mm -hmm, with me. Mm -hmm. uh, the two families together put it on. You know, it is not sponsored or, or paid for by the Democratic Party. Right. It's a gift of the two Holiday families to the state. Um, because it's tradition. We want to keep that tradition alive for the state. I, I wish there were more of them. How's the fifth generation looking now to keep the ball rolling for many years to come, Russell? Well, they're getting involved. Uh, my niece, Holly Douglas, who is my sister's child, yeah. uh, is a sophomore at college, but she went to the South Carolina uh, Democratic Convention and because she said, you know, I need to learn. I, I, you know, I'm going to. I'm the oldest of the children on our side. I need to know how this operates. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to to learn. And I think that uh, little Russell, my niece, and David, and uh, the other children, Francis, I see Joseph, and Jud, uh, and Johnson. Right. I think they'll all be involved. Yeah. I think the critical question is: Has anyone changed parties, or possibly? Spread a, a spread away, or, or open their wings in a different direction. Has that happened ever in the within the holiday family, or is it Not a secret? That, <laughs> if they did, it was a secret. Right. Um, you know, I mean, maybe there's some time that, that there's a a, a a Democrat that maybe you didn't like or whatever. I remember I'd say, "Well, Daddy, are you gonna vote for him?" He said, "I just might not vote for that office." You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, you never know what happens in the voting booth. You know, you never know. You never know. I mean, it's, it, it's your own business. It just generally, right. generally, the holiday families have believed in democratic principles, and that's why we vote the way we do. Mm -hmm. It's not voting because I, our family has always voted Democrat, democratic. It's just it, it's the principles that we believe in, and generally, the candidates are, that believe in those principles are who we want. That's a very good point. Russell, let's talk about the practical side of today. What are some of the things, if a viewer is coming in from Hartsville, let's say, they're going to be traveling down, they hit 501 and keep coming down right after they cross over the PD River. Right. They okay. are going to hit Galvin's Ferry and the PD Farms convenience store on the left. Okay. If you're coming from that direction, they're coming, we've got patrolmen out there that will be helping. But we've, for people coming from the Florence direction, right. we are generally going to have them parking on the right. The patrolman will uh, direct them to the right-hand side, and we've got several parking areas that way. Uh, we'll have, well, we've got uh, several lots. We have lights at one of the uh, pastures that we've got. We've got it all bush-hogged and ready. Okay. And for people coming that direction, if it's a long walk, we do have golf carts. Right. So don't, you know, if you have a hard time walking, don't struggle. We'll have somebody come and pick you up. Right. Or tell the patrolman, and we'll have some little walkie-talkies to make sure somebody comes to get you. Uh, if you happen to be handicapped, let the patrolman know that. We've got handicapped parking mm -hmm. in a certain area next to the store. Mm -hmm. If you're coming from Myrtle Beach, okay, mm -hmm. you pass the, uh, the bl our new blinking light in Gallup Ooh, yeah, yeah. I know We're going uptown here. Um, you take a right into my sister's pecan orchard. Mm -hmm. So people will be parking there. We'll have golf carts over there. Mm -hmm. So, But that's it's really close on that side. Mm -hmm. The main thing that I want to tell everybody 
is that the traffic is always bad on 501. Right. So number one, start early. But number two, if you have to cross the highway, cross where the patrolman is mm -hmm. because the patrolman will be stopping traffic so to make sure that you get across that highway. Right, but there will be golf carts going out as far as the, the pecan orchard or up there right. on the right over in the normal boat parking. Yeah. I guess the parking that's uh, for boats if you're coming in from yeah. Florence. Well, you, no, no, parking over there, no, because that's across the bridge. Okay. Um, right. So they need to go ahead and cross the bridge, okay, okay. be on the Gallivance Ferry side, right. and then you, you turn to the right, and that is actually Main Street Gallivance Ferry. Oh, that was the original Main Street. Oh. So you go down there. We'll be parking in the Big Red Barn mm -hmm. in the uh, area there. We'll be parking across from the Big Red Barn mm -hmm. down Main Street Gallivance Ferry. I didn't know there was a main. That's great. I thought 501 was Main Street, Gallon's Ferry. No, no, no. That's a new road. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that, Russell. Growing up there, what was that like for you growing up in Gallon's Ferry? Oh, it's just great. I can't think of any other way. We didn't have that big road the way it is now. Uh, you know, getting baptized in the river. Oh, yeah. Um, climbing trees. Going out and collecting my own eggs from my chickens. Riding ponies and horses and things like that. I mean, that's that's you, the way to grow up. You remember it vividly, Russell. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do. I do. And, and the uh, my sister's children, they call this, they used to call this Granddaddy's Big Party. And all their lives, they came to the Gallivance Ferry Stump, yeah. even though they lived in Greenville at the time. Right. And, and they'd say, well, we're going down for Granddaddy's Big Party. And they'd be walking around the parking lot with their balloons attached to them and Wow, Russell. Is there really a tree stump up there? I mean, are, is any, are any of the speakers standing on a stump? What's the deal yeah, with that? Right. Now, I hear that yesterday, uh, I think that the Republicans might have been actually standing on a stump, is oh, yeah. what I heard. Yeah. But I don't know if that's true. <clears throat> but uh, we are not, they are not standing on a stump, but we have an actual cypress stump mm -hmm. that came from Gallivance Ferry that has been carved out and is sitting in front of the podium. So the podium is inside this stump. Mm. So when the speaker is there today, um, they're speaking from a stump. Wow. But they're on the porch of the uh, Pity Farm store. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so exciting. Tommy Britton was so excited about that opportunity, about being the MC. I think he claimed he was the, the first non-holiday member a uh, family member that was doing that. I think Billy last week said there was someone else, maybe Bill Davis. Was he? Oh, yeah, Bill Davis. Well, yeah, but we considered him part of the family. As you do, I guess, with Tommy. That's right. Right. Well, we, well, we, we're almost considering Tommy part of the family. <laughs> you know, we've you know, we got to let him, uh, you know, he'll be Mature. there forever. Yeah. No. Oh, he's wonderful. Oh, yeah. But you don't want him to be part of the family at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> he, you, know, you know, just like Bill Davis was there, you know, his entire life. Mm -hmm. But um, we've adopted. We've adopted Tommy. Slowly, he's yeah. so good. Oh yeah, he is. I mean, he he's was just great so, on air. Absolutely. You know, I don't know if that comes from his uh, mm. being the father of a minister, uh, being a, a lawyer. Uh, he just has got the ability to to make sure to move everything along. Yeah. You know, he'll have a list today of how long each speaker should be allowed to speak. Right. And the reason we do that is that we've got so many people here to honor Fritz, and we've also got candidates, um, that um, we want to keep it moving. So as a lot of people say, the most important thing at the Gallivance Ferry Stump Speaking is not what is said from the podium, but is what is done in the crowd with the candidates walking among the people, as my father said, talking to you eyeball to eyeball. I mean, that's the most important thing that happens at the stump. And that is so vital, and that's exactly why it transcends broadcast television or radio or print. Obviously, it, as, uh, as Billy may have talked about last week, television, the advent of TV is, is possibly phased out a lot of stumps. It's so exciting that you all have kept it going, but that opportunity to be eyeball to eyeball is incredibly important. It's just it's a great opportunity. It is, I think the other stumps fell by because of, you know, it was more efficient to be on TV. Uh, I mean, I, you can reach a lot more of the state. And you know, what's what's sort of ironic is um, that we're still in existence and all the TV cameras are going to be there. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got ETV. 
it will be there today. And uh, I see NPR will be there. And uh, some stations from Greenville will be Channel 4, Channel 7, I think, and one or two stations from Charleston. All of our local will be there. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's just great. It is, absolutely. Russell, why should one of my viewers in Bennettsville come down to the stump? Why would, why should they travel down? I know, obviously, it's there's some statewide folks. It is that opportunity to see Senator Hollings or a carry, uh, someone from the Kerry campaign down. Well, two reasons. All right, number one, they will see these statewide uh, officials right. that I think that they, they'd want to see. I think they need to show Senator Fritz Hollins the support because I think everybody loves him, and he's just great. Uh, but also, it's just part of history. You know, we've really got to hang on to what we've got as part of history in South Carolina. And, you know, the fifth generation will carry this on. But everybody needs to come see a stump if they've never seen one. I mean, it's in the history books. It's been around, like ours, since 1876. Um, everything's getting paved. Everything's getting to be modern. But we need to treasure the old stuff, the old traditions. And that's why somebody in Bennettsville or somebody in uh, Columbia. Uh, or all over the state. All over sure. the state. Or even the southeast. It's important so many of our viewers in North Carolina to give them an opportunity to get in, to be able to see something like that, possibly to set up stumps in their hometown, to give an opportunity to get this going again, as you say, whether it's for the uh, the event that happened yesterday, I mean, which is a, which is a great follow-up to y'all's. Obviously, oh, flattery's a... That's right. Flattery is the what, serious okay. form of no or, imitation. Uh, imitation, the, yeah. We'll get this right. Imitation is the serious form of flattery. That's exactly right. And we, and, and I love it. Yeah. I mean, we need to have this. Yeah. That's why they have uh, all the candidates. Uh, national candidates are having town hall meetings. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're people. The people want to be able to see the person face to face, where the person is not on script. Mm -hmm. I mean. You can say anything if you've got a script, but... You're, you're exactly right, Russell. You're exactly right. What makes attendees keep coming back year after year? And, of course, it's every two years. Every two it's years. always in May. This started 128 years ago. This is a big deal. What makes co folks keep coming back, traveling 501 to get to this little PD Farms convenience store? <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of... Well... Well, I mean, it is in the okay, middle of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, really. Um, they come because if... if they come because they've come before, okay? They come because their mom and the daddy brought them a long time ago. It's, it's just part of their tradition. Or they come because they want to see these statewide candidates face-to-face. -face. I mean, it's old-timey mule rides, donkeys, old-timey uh, gas station oh, yeah. with, with the original prices of the SO there. You know, uh, I think we'll have a Model A park there and... I think we'll have had people pull up and say, you're kidding. Can I really get gas for that much? Yeah. Oh, I'm that's sure you will. That's why people come back. Mm -hmm. it's people are in love with tradition. Mm -hmm. And this is tradition. I mean, it's a, my father would say it's a slice of Americana. And it is. It truly is, yes. we got two minutes, Russell. And speaking to your dad, I'm glad you mentioned him. You talked about him about five weeks ago being an inveterate letter writer. and. After the stump, he was preparing for two years of letter writing, a campaign to make sure as many people from around the state would be there at the next stump. What's your dad thinking today? Obviously, he's not with us, but uh, what's... Uh, he is so happy. I know that he is smiling down and knowing that we did and are doing exactly what we told him we would do. My sister said to him on his last day on this earth, he said, she said, Daddy, we're going to keep the stump going. He said, good, good. We could, you know, I mean, he, he's happy about it. This is it's just part of uh, tradition and family and the state. And, and it's your, just wonderful. Absolutely. And your uncle as well and your mom. Obviously, yesterday, as you were telling her on Mother's Day, we need to wait a couple of days, 48 hours, to celebrate Mother's Day for her. This is a big, big thing. I, I told Mama we'd celebrate on Wednesday. And I, did Wednesday suit her? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. It did, yeah. it did. And, you know, we've got um, my Aunt Frances. So she, uh, she's probably going to wait till Wednesday also. Yeah. I, I think everybody got taken out yesterday for Mother's Day. Right. But we all felt like we were so hurried. Oh, yeah. So it'll be good. And um, 
uh, my Uncle Joe, I'm glad you mentioned that. I know he's smiling now. I'm sure that my uh, Uncle Joe and my daddy and Bill Davis are all looking down at us. And my grandfather, who was named George Holiday, my great-grandfather, Joseph William Holiday, who is, by the way, being put into the Business Hall of Fame uh, at the end of this month. Mm. I mean, he was the first one with the stump. So I, they're all up there. They're all up there smiling that we've carried, continued this tradition. And this is two uh, two daughters and 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 two nieces and uh, and a, a lot of ladies and, involved. Oh yeah, we've got uh, my cousin Betty and uh, my cousin Judson's wife Cheryl, and then Billy Holiday, and then we, we've got all these women involved. It took all these women to take the place of two 84 year old men to put this thing on. I don't see how they did it, because it's, it's not easy to make it look effortless. Absolutely. Russell, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We're going to see you this afternoon? Absolutely. We'll see you out there. Okay. Thank you. Definitely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Russell Holiday coming up next. The first stump was held in 1876, a 128-year tradition. You heard Russell say it, a slice of pure Americana, quoting her dad. Get out there at 4.30. If you don't get off work till 5, you can get out there at 5.30. The official ceremony kicks off at 6. Lots of food, lots of fun. The 2004 Gallivan's Ferry Stump. Get out there. <laughs>